Hi there everyone. Today's video is going to be a super deep technical dive on all of the different settings in BL Heli 32. I've been doing some exhaustive testing on some larger and some smaller motors and in this video I'm going to be showing you all of the results. I'm going to be taking you through what all of the different settings do and how you can use them to tune your ESC to get the best possible performance. At the very end I'm going to be giving you my ESC setting recommendations so that you can get your ESC tuned to perfection and get the most performance out of it. It's a lot to cover in one video so let's not waste any more time, let's dive right into it. If you'd like access to all of this information and my ESC tuning recommendations in a handy quick reference guide in PDF format then that's available on my Patreon. If you sign up you'll also be the first to see my upcoming ESC tuning recommendations for tiny whoops and larger 7 and 8 inch motors as well. There are links to all of that down in the video description. Before we dive into the test data I want to take you through what we're going to be testing today. Starting with the motors, we're going to be testing two motors. The first is a big powerful 5 inch motor with 14 magnets and 12 coils. So this is the AOS Supernova 2207 and it's the most powerful, highest performing 5 inch motor that I've ever tested. For a smaller motor we have this Skystars 1404. This is a 3 inch motor. It's only got 12 magnets, so it's got fewer magnets than the Supernova and only 9 coils rather than 12. So this is a very different motor configuration. It's much more popular among the smaller sizes and this Skystars motor is the best 1404 motor that I've ever tested. So it's a very good candidate for this type of ESC testing. We're going to be using some test props and some flywheels to do the testing. So we've got a 5 inch test prop, the HQ 5 by 45 by 3 V1S. It's my standard test prop for 5 inch motors. And for the 3 inch we have this HQ T 3 by 3 by 3 test prop. Again that's my standard test prop for 3 inch motors. We are also going to be doing some flywheel tests. For the 5 inch motor we're going to be using this 100 kilogram millimeter squared aluminium flywheel. And for the smaller 1404 motor we have this 10 kilogram millimeter squared flywheel. Now that we've covered the hardware that we're going to be testing it's time to look at the software. And we're going to be using BL Heli Suite 32 to change the settings on our BL Heli 32 ESC and tune it to give the best possible performance. There are three key settings that affect ESC performance that we're going to be looking at today. The first is ramp up power. Ramp up power controls how quickly the ESC increases the power delivered to the motor as the motor accelerates and increases in RPM. It can be adjusted from 3% all the way up to 150%. Having too little ramp up power tends to cause motors to struggle to start and can also limit how quickly a motor can accelerate, can reduce its responsiveness. Conversely, having too much ramp up power dumps current into the motor when it's still spinning at a relatively low RPM and that doesn't produce any more torque because the motor is fundamentally limited by its maximum mechanical torque but all that extra current does cause a lot of motor heating so you can get very hot motors if your ramp up power is set too high. The optimum amount of ramp up power is going to be the minimum amount that still gives you the maximum motor acceleration. The second setting we're going to look at is motor timing. Motor timing controls when during the rotation of the motor bell the coils are activated to drive the, the rotor round. It can be adjusted from 1 degree all the way up to 31 degrees and there is also an auto setting. Having a timing that's too low will limit the maximum torque and power of the motor particularly at high RPMs because the coil won't have time to activate before the rotor has sort of swung past it. Having too much timing will increase torque and power but will also increase motor heating. So similar to ramp up power the optimum timing is the minimal amount of timing, the smallest amount that still gives you the maximum torque and power from the motor. The final setting we're going to be looking at is the PWM frequency and this is adjustable from 16 kilohertz on the low end all the way up to 128 kilohertz on the high end and there is also a by RPM setting as well. So we're going to be talking about that later. It's not clear to me what the optimal PWM frequency should be so we're going to be testing a whole heap of them. There's some evidence that high PWM frequencies improve efficiency for very small motors and I've certainly seen in my testing before that high PWM frequencies can reduce the braking torque of motors, it reduces how quickly they slow down and that can negatively affect the responsiveness of the quad. 
So we're going to be testing a whole heap of different PWM frequencies on both this 5 inch and 3 inch motor and seeing what the optimum is for each of those configurations. There are of course lots of other settings on this panel but we're not going to be talking about them too much today because none of them have a measurable effect on motor performance and that includes sign modulation mode which I did test but didn't have any measurable impact on motor performance on either the 5 or the 3 inch motor. Let's look first at ramp up power and here we're measuring ramp up power on our 5 inch supernova motor and the HQ 5 by 45 by 3 prop. I'm testing this with 16 degrees of timing and 24 kilohertz PWM, which is the default for BL Heli 32. And we're measuring the rate of acceleration of the motor using the data from bidirectional D shot captured on my thrust test stand, which is the best way I've found to measure the acceleration of the motor. What we can see is that at very low ramp up powers, like 6%, the motor does accelerate a little more slowly with the prop on compared to with higher ramp up power settings but we don't see any difference in acceleration above about 10 percent ramp up power but from my testing i can tell you that as you increase the ramp up power above 10 percent the motor does get slightly warmer um, with each test when you increase that ramp up power so there's no benefit as it were, to running a higher ramp up power than 10%, but the motor does get hotter as a result. Obviously, you might not be running exactly the same motor as this on exactly the same ESC, and it's always better to have slightly more ramp up power than slightly less. So I would recommend 30% ramp up power as a pretty conservative setting for a high powered five inch motor like this. If we look now at deceleration, you can see that ramp up power has absolutely no effect on the deceleration of the motor whatsoever. So we don't have to consider deceleration when thinking about ramp up power. I also did some tests with a flywheel and a flywheel test is, I guess it's a different type of acceleration test because the mass is much larger and the motor accelerates much more slowly. Here it's taking seconds to accelerate rather than milliseconds. And in this case, there's really no difference based on ramp up power at all. The one thing I will say is that having the ramp up power set really low at 3% did prevent the motor from starting in all the tests. So you can't have ramp up power too low, otherwise the motor simply won't start spinning. With the three inch motor, I saw a much bigger influence of ramp up power on the acceleration of the motor. Here we can see that at 6% and 10%, the motor is accelerating more slowly than it is at higher ramp up powers and that we don't see much difference in acceleration above about 20 to 30% ramp up power or so. At 3% ramp up, the motor was again unable to start. And based on this information, I would recommend that for a three inch motor, if you've got a slightly different motor, a slightly different ESC, a 50% ramp up power setting is gonna be very conservative. It's gonna make sure that you're achieving maximum motor acceleration without getting too much heating. Exactly the same as with the five inch motors, I didn't see any influence of ramp up power on the deceleration of the motor. So you don't need to worry about ramp up power when considering how fast the motor is able to decelerate. I also did a flywheel test on the motor. And again, this actually showed quite similar results to what I saw with the prop testing, despite the acceleration being a lot slower. Um, at 6% and 10% ramp up power, the motor acceleration was reduced and also perhaps just a little bit at 20%. But once you get up to 30% ramp up power, that's the maximum motor acceleration. And increasing ramp up power beyond that didn't give any additional benefit. But again, it did get the motor slightly hotter. As I said before, a 50% ramp up power setting should be really conservative for most 3 inch motors and ESCs. Now let's look at motor timing. And one of the first things I noticed when changing the timing of the ESC was its effect on the measured KV of the motor. You can see that increasing the timing significantly increases the measured KV of the motor. And I measure KV by driving the motor full throttle at 10 volts and then dividing the RPM the motor achieves by 10 to get the KV in RPM per volt. And you can see that increasing the timing from eight to 31 degrees increases the KV by more than 100 KV. So it does have a big impact on KV and that the auto timing setting has pretty much the same KV as the 16 degrees of timing. The same effect is true on the three inch motor. Increasing the timing also increases the KV. And again, it's by a significant amount. It's about 200 KV in this case. When we're looking at the timing versus the responses to the motor with the test prop, 
we can see that increasing the timing very slightly increases the responsiveness of the motor, the rate of acceleration of the motor for the five inch supernova. I did notice that large timings, 31 degrees, also slightly increased the motor heating during the responsiveness test. So I could feel a difference in the temperature of the motor with a larger timing. Looking at the three inch motor and the responsiveness, the difference is a lot bigger. We can see that with eight degrees of timing, the motor really struggles to accelerate. And then as we increase the timing to 16 and then 24 degrees, we see big improvements in motor responsiveness. But once we get to 24 degrees, we don't see any further improvement by increasing the timing to 31 degrees, like we saw with the uh, five inch supernova. With this smaller motor, there's just no benefit beyond 24 degrees. And it might be due to the difference in pole count. The three inch motor has 12 poles with nine coils, whereas the larger five inch supernova motor has 14 poles and 12 coils. So that difference in geometry, difference in the number of coils might affect the optimum timing to use on the motor. If we're looking at deceleration, we can see that for the five inch motor, timing really has no or very, very little effect on the deceleration of the motor. The 31 degrees of timing does seem to decelerate very slightly slower than the others, but the effect is very, very marginal. If we look at the three inch motor, the effect of timing is a little bit more pronounced. We see that the 31 degrees of timing is the slowest to decelerate, and then the 16 degrees of timing is slightly better, but auto and 24 degrees of timing give the best result. And Again, the effect is pretty marginal here, but 24 degrees of timing again seems to be the best for the three inch motor. If we're looking at efficiency, for the five inch supernova motor, motor timing had very little effect on efficiency. Uh, we got pretty much the same amount of thrust at the same amount of electrical power, no matter what timings we used. Um, possibly you could say that the 24 and 31 degrees of timing had some advantages, particularly at those higher power levels. And then the lower timing, sort of 16 degrees or so, has a slight advantage at the lower power levels. And that corresponds with what I've seen in previous testing. When you're just cruising around, you might want to argue that having the 16 degrees of timing will give you the best overall efficiency. If you're looking more for top end power and efficiency at high throttle, then you could definitely argue that uh, a slightly higher timing, maybe 24 degrees, gives a small benefit, but it's pretty marginal. If we look at the three inch motor, the effects are a little bit bigger. Here we see that the auto timing falls slightly behind the rest in terms of efficiency, and the fixed timings do quite a bit better. Between the fixed timings, definitely the eight degrees of timing is the worst, and then there's very, very little difference between 16, 24, and 31 degrees of timing in terms of efficiency. Looking at top end thrust and power now, we can see that the 24 degrees and 31 degrees of timing on the five inch supernova motor provide slightly more top end thrust than the other options. So you're getting a little bit more power, a little bit more thrust at full throttle by increasing the timing to 24 or 31 degrees. For the three inch motor, we see slightly different result. Here, 16 degrees and 24 degrees of timing provide the maximum thrust. And then as we go to 31 degrees, actually the maximum thrust falls away a little bit. And this again corresponds with the motor responsiveness not really improving at 31 degrees of timing. It seems that for that smaller three inch motor, more than 24 degrees of timing just doesn't offer any benefit anymore. Now that we have all that data, I think we can give some good recommendations on what the best timing settings are for five inch and three inch motors. I think if you're running a five inch motor and you're just wanting to cruise around and have the best efficiency, then 16 degrees of timing is probably the best choice. If you're looking for the maximum top end power and you're looking for efficiency higher in the throttle, then certainly you could consider increasing that timing to 24 degrees. And it's not gonna give you uh, much impact in terms of motor heating, but you will get a little bit more top end power. If however, you're running a three inch motor with 12 poles and nine coils, then it's definitely worth increasing that timing to 24 degrees because you see benefits in significant benefits in responsiveness, efficiency, and top end thrust and power. So definitely worth going for 24 degrees on a three inch motor. The final setting is probably the one that I'm asked the most about, which is PWM frequency. 
And here we're looking at PWM frequency versus the acceleration of a prop with the five inch supernova motor. And we can see that there is very little difference in acceleration, regardless of PWM setting, apart from 128 kilohertz. So that super high PWM frequency does seem to significantly reduce the acceleration of the motor. All of the other PWM settings have very similar accelerations, and you could say there might be a slight edge to either the 32 kilohertz or the 48 kilohertz at low RPMs, and maybe 96 kilohertz is doing a bit better at higher RPMs. It, all of these differences are very marginal. What is very interesting though, is when we look at the three inch motor, is that there's actually a much bigger difference. Higher PWM frequencies on that smaller motor with smaller coils, lower inductance, really did not accelerate anywhere near as well as the lower PWM frequencies. And in fact, above 48 kilohertz, testing 96 and 128K, the motor wouldn't even accelerate at all. It didn't accelerate cleanly. It kind of, I could hear it jerking and sometimes it would fail to accelerate. So for smaller motors, for three inch size motors, PWM frequency has a much bigger impact than on a larger five inch motor. That's probably due to the different inductance of the motor coils. Needless to say, the 16 and 24 kilohertz PWM were the fastest accelerating. And then as we moved to 32 and 48 kilohertz, the uh, rate of acceleration really reduced. Looking at deceleration, PWM frequency has always had a huge effect on motor braking with increasing PWM frequency, reducing the strength of motor braking. And we see that again with the five inch supernova motor. As we increase that PWM frequency, the motor decelerates more and more slowly. And it's actually really audible when you get up to those higher PWM frequencies that the motor is taking a long time to spin down after it's accelerated. Based on this, you can't really recommend running a fixed PWM frequency much higher than about 48 kilohertz because of that huge impact on motor braking. If we're looking at the three inch motor, we see the same effect. The uh, higher the PWM frequency, the slower the motor is decelerating. Unfortunately, I don't have data for 96 or 128K here because as I said before, the motor really struggled to actually accelerate cleanly with those PWM settings. So I couldn't get a clean test. But for the PWM settings that we do have, we can see the same trend as we saw with the five inch motor. Higher PWM frequency, worse braking performance. Now let's look at PWM versus efficiency for the five inch supernova motor. And it's often been stated that a higher PWM frequency increases the efficiency of the ESC and increases the efficiency of the motor. Um, we don't see a strong effect of this on these, these test results. Motor PWM here has a pretty small effect on, on efficiency. We do see that increasing the PWM frequency slightly does help increase efficiency initially. So there's definitely an improvement from 16 kilohertz PWM to 24 kilohertz PWM. But beyond that, we see very, very little benefit and increasing PWM, PWM frequency more and more doesn't give you greater and greater improvements in motor efficiency. Looking now at the three inch motor, we see very, very similar results. Increasing PWM frequency has a small beneficial effect on efficiency initially when we go from 16 to 24K, but then the improvements are non-existent above 24K. We don't see much benefit at all increasing that PWM frequency higher and higher past 24 kilohertz. Looking at PWM versus thrust for the five inch supernova, we see that PWM frequency has very little effect on top end thrust and power. The ESC is not even switching when you're at full throttle. It's just fully on, fully off. So it's not surprising that we don't see any effect of PWM frequency. PWM frequency does have a small effect on the throttle curve. Um, increasing the PWM frequency does can sort of give you a slightly different shaped throttle curve, but this effect is pretty marginal and you probably wouldn't even notice it. That top end thrust and power though is identical no matter what PWM frequency you're setting. The same is pretty much true for the three inch motor. Again, we see very, very small differences, very little difference at the very top end in terms of thrust and power. Again, the ESC is not switching. We do see slightly different shaped throttle curves and you could argue that uh, there is 
the throttle curve for the higher PWM frequencies are slightly steeper than for the lower PWM frequencies. But again, this is a pretty marginal effect. And even though you've got that steeper throttle curve, once you get up to the peak throttle, they're all very similar. Looking through all this data, we can make some pretty clear recommendations for PWM frequency for both 5-inch and 3-inch motors. And in both cases, I would recommend 24 kilohertz as a sweet spot for PWM frequency. It has the best balance of motor responsiveness and also efficiency. If you go to 16 kilohertz, you can get a little bit more responsiveness, but at the cost of some efficiency. And 24 kilohertz gives you the, the kind of the best balance, the best of both worlds. If we're talking about PWM frequency, we have to mention the variable PWM options in BL Heli 32. For example, you can set your PWM frequency low to 24K and your PWM frequency high to something else, so let's say 48K. And what that will do is it will linearly change your PWM frequency with your throttle position. So if you're at zero throttle, you'll have 24K PWM. And as you increase to full throttle, that PWM frequency will rise to 48K. In my testing, this doesn't offer a lot of benefit. There isn't much benefit of higher PWM frequencies at higher throttle positions, so variable PWM doesn't offer much benefit. However, there is also a by RPM function, and this can offer some nice benefits. If you're increasing the throttle and you find that the, the throttle sort of gets stuck or there's a kind of jumpiness in the throttle at a certain point as you're increasing the throttle, that could be due to the PWM frequency matching up with the commutation frequency. And when that happens, the uh, throttle response can get a bit notchy. What by RPM does is it increases the PWM frequency with increasing motor RPM to keep the PWM frequency away from the commutation frequency and avoid any notchiness. Now, I don't notice this with my quads. I always run 24K, 24K fixed PWM. But if you are noticing a bit of notchiness in the throttle during slow throttle ramps, then definitely try changing to the by RPM setting. The PWM frequency doesn't rise all that much. It only rises from about 24K to maybe 40 kilohertz maximum. So you're still within that low frequency PWM range where you get good braking, good responsiveness, uh, and good efficiency. All of that stuff just might help fix a notchy throttle. I hope you enjoyed this video and that these recommendations will help you get your BL Heli 32 ESC tuned to perfection. Don't forget, you can get all the information and my recommendations in PDF format on my Patreon. And if you sign up, you'll also be the first to hear about my upcoming recommendations for Tiny Whoop ESCs and ESCs for larger seven and eight inch motors as well. Don't miss out, there are links down in the video description. That's all I have for you for today. So until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.